good afternoon and welcome to the Jenna Show. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching live, go ahead, hit that share button. Let people know that we're live Wednesdays at 2 o'clock right here on Lakeline Connect. And if you're watching the rebroadcast later, you can always hit share as well and get in on the conversation. We'd love to see you guys in the comment section and hear what you have to say about our amazing guests and big business segments. Today, um, I'd like you to head on over to our Facebook group, which is The Jenna Colburn Show. Go ahead and like that group, and let's start conversations over there as well. We have lots of post-show discussions going on, as well as inspirational memes. I know you guys like your inspirational memes, and I give you a little... Uh, tidbits and tips throughout the week so join us over on the Facebook group as well you can find it through Lakeland Connect. So we have a really great show coming up for you today as we do every Wednesday in our tips tricks and trends segment we're stopping by at Bonneville Home Hardware where they just got in a new shipment and it's like their spring line of houseware goods so we're going to go through the houseware section and just look at those really great items and pick out some of my favorites and just a little tip okay I know it's still April but we're fast approaching Mother's Day so instead of getting that last minute gift you know running down to home hardware the Saturday before Mother's Day why not shop early and get in on some really great items they have in store right now so we're going to be popping by checking out I'll give you a little tour of home hardware Bonneville we're also going to be heading down to Vermilion for our Project Gazelle business spotlight this week we're looking at potential health which is a combination of skills from um, Western medicine as well as your modern uh, medicine as well so it's kind of really actually it is a very cool business and I'm so excited to share potential health with you so make sure you stick around for the Project Gazelle business spotlight wanted to touch on Project Gazelle just really quickly for you ladies if you're either an entrepreneur or you're thinking maybe I'll start a business or you've been in business for a while Project Gazelle is an absolutely free organization that pro provides you with like business tools so whether you're looking for funding a mentor or some business coaching or maybe you need to make a business plan whatever you need to do uh, if it has to do with entrepreneurship they can help you out one of my favorite things about project gazelle is really a network of women w who are like-minded with you so i think it's um, an endless possibilities resource center and it's absolutely free so why not sign up you can go to projectgazelle.ca to learn more about that all right, today we are taking a look at women in politics. Did you know that Canada ranked 50th in the world for women in politics with only 23% of their provincial, federal, or territorial elected officials being women? Locally, there is a handful of women in politics when you look through the county of St. Paul, the town of St. Paul, Vermilion. You look at Vermilion County, you look at Lac La Biche, as well as the MD of Bonneville, City of Cold Lake, and the town of Bonneville. We are looking at just single digit women who are on council. Often councils only have one female sitting on it. In the case of the MD of Bonneville, zero females are represented on that council. That's something that uh, should change. And if you're a female and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I might want to be a part of that change, I want, might want to run. I, I may, you may have the opportunity, sorry, coming up this October as the municipal elections are happening. So if you've been thinking about it, I think now is a great time to do your research, learn more about the councils that are in your riding and how you can make a really positive change and help change that number from 50th in the world. Think about that, Canada, 50th in the world for representing women in politics with only 23% of females holding roles in federal, provincial, and territorial elected official roles. So today we're gonna to be chatting with Elisa Brasso. She is one of the select few women. She is one of two women on town of Bonneville Council. She's gonna be talking about her experience on council, how she went from a stay-at-home mom to a town councillor, and hopefully, should she be successful, the mayor of Bonneville. Yes, Elisa has put in her name for the mayor of Bonneville, and She's going to be talking about what she hopes for Bonneville as well as what she sees she can do to help progress the town along. So the, all of that is to come right here on the Jenna Colburn Show. Please stick around um, and hit share. We'll be right back. Look. 
Atelier Pharmacy is proud to be celebrating 50 years in the community of Bonneville. And we're even more proud to help grow the community through our local supporting local initiative. Come into Telliers and you'll find a vast selection of local products made right here in the Lakeland region. We have unique gifts and specialty items along with everything you'd expect to find at your local pharmacy. At Telliers, you'll get that small town service with a smile. Compassionate local pharmacists who are dedicated to the community's health and wellness. Tellier Pharmacy offers the Simple Program, a brand which synchronizes your medications with unique packaging designed to make your life and your medication simple. While you're shopping, be sure to grab a specialty coffee from our 1929 coffee bar stocked full with drinks, soups, sandwiches, and more. Celebrate 50 years with Tellier's local supporting local. Welcome back to the Jenna Colborn Show. Joined in studio with special guest, Elisa Brasso. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. For the past three and a half years, you have been a counselor for the town of Bonneville. It's been your first term in office, and I would just love the opportunity to talk about your perspective in office, as well as women in politics. So um, thank you so much for joining me. Let's start off with what made you decide to get into politics? Well, uh, initially, when I ran for council, it was nothing um, that was not on my radar, uh, going into politics or anything like that. But I'd been staying, I'd been at home, a stay-at-home mom for maybe seven years at that point. So, of course, I was thinking about getting back into the workforce. And um, I just, you know, started getting more intrigued in things going on in the community and at that point, also, I should note, I had been on sitting on the board with Community Futures for a couple of years, so I kind of had a good understanding of what it was to participate in the decision-making at a board level. And I believe somebody had mentioned to me, you know, municipal elections are coming up, maybe something you might be interested in. So I took the opportunity to go to a council meeting because I wanted to see, you know, what are they talking about, what kind of decisions are they making, um, and from there, it just piqued my interest, and I continued to attend every council meeting for six months, running up to the election. And during one of those meetings, one of the former councillors, um, Councillor John Irwin, had kind of slipped me his card, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm not running again, and if you're interested, let's, let's chat. So, again, I took that opportunity to meet with him and see what it's all about, and it kind of just ramped up from there, and... And I went for it, and yeah, I've never regretted the decision. What are some of your passion projects that you've been able to be a part of on town council? Oh, great. Uh, so many things. I feel like I'm passionate about everything that uh, all the boards that I'm on. Uh, I sit on FCSS that does a lot of things for families and um, seniors. So a lot of the projects that we work with there, uh, I really, really enjoy um, of course, the economic, regional economic development is one of my biggest um, things that I'm passionate about. And, and that was something that through this council term we created, um, we joined forces with the MD to say, you know, let's together as municipalities be the drivers for economic development in our region. So that's been uh, something that I've been really excited for. And I also sit on the library uh, board, and I'm a big fan of the library, so I love sitting on that board and some of the things that, that we've done there, and yeah, quite a few. <laughs> I'm sure you have some passion <laughs> projects you're still thinking of. Um, we'll get to your big announcement in just a little bit, and some people know the announcement already, but yeah. we'll get to that in just a little bit. But before we do, I wanted to highlight... Um, Female in politics. So here in the Lake Lamb region, we don't have too many females in politics. On your own council, you have two, yourself and Lorna Sorschuk. If we look over to a neighboring, neighboring community like St. Paul, we're only seeing one female, count. well, she's the mayor, mm -hmm. Mayor Marie Miller. Over in the MD, there's no females on that council. And in the city of Cold Lake, just one with Vicki Lefebvre. So do you find it's uh, unchartered or hard territory being one of only a few female counselors? Um, I'm, I'm not too sure. I can't speak for all females what they think, but, um, you know, it's not, maybe it's uh, been a position that females might be um, intimidated to do, mm -hmm. perhaps. 
and maybe that's why we don't see many women there. But um, it's certainly something that I think anybody, if you understand what it's like to have that democratic process and um, that decision-making process that I think they can do, and I, I do encourage women to be able to, you know, to step up and, mm -hmm. and do those jobs. Um, uh, and, I, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. And I think yeah. what's unique about you, as opposed to some of the other females that are sitting on councils right now, is you still have a young family at home. And I see the other councillors and Mayor Maureen Miller who have older children. And so they're not in the midst of that, um, well, your children must be 12 and under, yes. I'm guessing. Yeah. 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 So do you find that role hard to kind of balance between motherhood and sitting on council? I, you know what, like, I love this question only because for me and in total honesty, it actually is the perfect job for me for having a family at home. I have a really supportive husband. We, the home we do together, we share all the responsibilities, making supper, cleaning, laundry, tending to the kids. So that makes it really easy as well. But for me, it's almost like the perfect part-time job. And so I still can be at home. I can still do those things, uh, you know, even during the day while my kids are at school, such as today, I didn't need to be out of the home until 11. So that gave me the time, you know, to tend to home things, uh, to prep for supper and, and, you know, things like that. So even though my kids are younger, it does, I guess, get a little hairy after school when they're in the after school sports. But again, we've been fortunate enough where my husband's home in the evening. So we really do that job sharing. And if I'm busy, then, you know, if he's home, he steps up. So it, it really has, it is, really is the perfect part-time job for a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> well, let's get to the big announcement. And I know many people have seen this announcement as already as it has been making headlines throughout local media. But about a month back, you announced that you filed your papers and you will be running for mayor for the town of Bonneville. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pretty exciting uh, stuff. Um, you've s spent one term on council. Uh, many people might say, hey, are you ready? having only one term under your belt? Absolutely. Um, people might be thinking that. So before I, before I did go on maternity leave, so I have three kids, and when we decided to have a family, I took that time off from my career and just to be at home. Um, but before that, I you know, had a long-standing career, and I really worked myself up. And so I knew what I, what I was capable of mm -hmm. before that. And um, so... Going back a couple years ago when I started thinking, you know what, I think this is a job that I can do and, and I want to do it. What are some of the things that I need to do? Are there things I need to learn? Um, do I need more experience in that leadership type of role? So being on Community Futures, I took the initiative there to take over as the chair. And I did that for two, two years and I'm still the chair there. So that gave me the experience of what is it to lead a board? What does it lead to, to lead a team? What is it to be in an environment to chair um, a, a team like that, board members? And, and what is it to kind of head that, um, setting that vision and being that leadership role? Um, so I really use that as my stepping stone to, okay, now I have that experience. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, how does that relate now to council? So I've been doing that for two years, really trying to prep myself and get myself ready for the role. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been amazing. And, and I know I'll, I'll be able to move those experiences over to, to my mayorship, there, should I be successful. Is there any yeah. um, specific projects or uh, maybe something that you'd like to see during your term, should you be successful as becoming the mayor? I really just want to see, I, I want to see us all, this is going to sound kind of funny, all working together, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, collaboration is one of my pillars, and I really do believe in that. So how does that work? Bringing the business community together, bringing individuals together, so really having that open communication with all these different um, groups within our community, and I really want to see us take off with that. And so I think how we really can work there is, okay, what, what is our vision for the town? Where do we want to be in this future? What, what do we see Bonneville as? And then we bring everybody together and how can we all work together in our own little organizations, our own little silos, if you will, 
but all working towards that same uh, same goal, same vision. So I really think that we can work, the town can really work towards um, making that something, you know, for the future of Bonneville. Being such close neighbors to the MD of Bonneville and the city of Cold Lake, we've often found that this region has been working together on several regional projects. Are there any projects that you would like to highlight for yourself? Like, hey, I was part of this committee and worked with all three of these groups. Uh, when COVID hit last year, um, Community Futures, and, and I will admit, Community Futures, I'm, I sit there as a, a volunteer. This is not something that I'm pointed to with the town, mm -hmm. um, but it's just an amazing experience, so I, I do refer to it often. But in that role, we really said, okay, we have a pivotal role to work in this region on supporting our businesses, and but how, how does that look? We are, Community Futures is regional, but we know Bonneville is different from the MD, is different from Cold Lake. Mm -hmm. We don't want to try to decide for all these different municipalities what it should look like. So let's bring everybody together. So we really headed a, um, I, I think we called it some uh, business resiliency mm -hmm. committee. But we had the mayor of Cold Lake there. We had the MD councillors present, um, Community Futures, and we had the town present. And we fostered that um, collaboration for a couple of months where we met on a regular basis. What are their needs in your community, communities? How can we help? And it was um, a, an area where we can really share that information and, and then just work on resources that we each individually needed. So that was uh, something really awesome that I was a part of. And yeah. I hear you speak of businesses quite a lot yeah. today. Uh, is that one of your... Um, pillars, if you will, for your upcoming election? Um, I talk a lot about businesses because, so again, my, my past career was in human resources and I've done a lot of studying in, you know, workers in an economy and, mm -hmm. and the importance of having a job and, um, and that, that, you know, that, I'm not saying everybody needs to work, but it is important in the way our system is created. And so if we want people to stay in our community, they need to have jobs so that they can support their families and support themselves and access, you know, the, the things that they, they want. So I, um, I think it is a crucial component to a municipality, and I think it's important that we work with them, again, to work on, in the same direction, in the same vision, you know, where do we want to go, where do we want to take it? So, um, yeah, so I think that's why it, business and industry is so important to me. Having a young family, you must find different perspectives than perhaps your other counselors who might not have a family or have a family that's grown and gone on. Um, have you brought any of those different perspectives to the council table? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think it's important that everybody brings their own perspective. And um, I think that's why I really enjoy being on council. Um, if you work with a really great group of people who have respect for one another and respect that we all have different perspectives, we all have different, uh, we're all in different places in our lives, and we have to bring that to the table when we're making decisions. And so sometimes I think the answer to a decision is this, Mm -hmm. And then another counselor who's at a different time in their life and they go, well, you know, this is what it's like for us. And then, um, you know, it makes me take a step back and go, oh, you know, I never thought of that before. But I certainly bring that perspective to the table. Absolutely. How are you with like resolving conflicts? Because I imagine with such a diverse council, things kind of get heated at times. For sure they do. And uh, at Almost, it's almost a, a good thing because we're all bringing different perspectives. And if you're not open to mm -hmm. hearing and listening to other people and their perspectives, you might get that conflict. Personally, um, it's been a learning curve for me, but I've really been open and, and my attitude is, okay, that is a different perspective. There's co conflict there, but let's, let's talk it out in a way. Tell me, wh where are you coming from? What's your end goal? What's your intention here? And how can I learn to work on that? Maybe you have strengths mm -hmm. that for me is a weakness. So how can we work together and play those together? So um, I'm very much a person who 
you know, I, I'd rather just talk it out and let's let's figure it out and move on and have respect for each other. And it's worked out so far. Do you have yeah. any advice for any other females who might be thinking about heading into politics with the election coming up this year? Yeah, uh, well, my advice would be just reach out, talk to somebody, um, attend one of our council meetings. Well, they're at this point with COVID, we're uh, closed to the public, but you can stream it and watch it online. So that would be my first um, suggestion would be just to kind of get to know what it entails. And then, yeah, reach out and, you know, I would be more than willing to sit down and talk to anybody. Um, but don't be uh, intimidated. You know, don't don't be afraid. We we need women perspectives. We need all sorts of per perspectives around the table. So um, I would highly encourage somebody to to reach out if they're interested in in running. What's your hope for Bonnieville? For Bonnieville, my hope is um, so. My my grandparents live in Bonnieville. Uh, you know, my all my family lives in Bonnieville. My husband is from Bonneville, born and raised. He will never leave. Mm -hmm. We're not leaving. We have three kids. My hope is that they will never leave and so on and so forth. So my hope for Bonneville is that we can create a, a, a future for Bonneville where we can take care of our families, take care of our people through jobs, through recreation, um, through whatever it is that they need, social spaces, uh, is it education? Whatever are the needs, I hope that we have that for generations to come. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Elisa. Thank you. When we look at Project Gazelle, um, any female owned business is at least 50% owned. They can um, be part of Project Gazelle. I was fortunate enough to be um, to start out with Project Gazelle right at the very start. What I found with Project Gazelle is it's helped us to build those soft skills um, that maybe then I've been able to bring back into the organization. We call them incubator spaces, but in a lot of ways they're actually co-working spaces. And so what a co-working space is, is maybe you're working from home and you just want to get out of the house and have connections with other people. There's equipment, for example, we are going to have some specialized lighting and that type of thing. So if you're selling a product and you're wanting to use your smartphone to take pictures, you've got the proper lighting for it. We do have computers and it, they're located in spaces where there's supports available to you as well. We also have gone with a concept called Cafe Inc. And that's where we've partnered with a cafe in a community and they will be a Project Gazelle Cafe Inc. They can go in, we have what we call a portfolio, it's got a tablet in there, it's got information about the project. So for example, maybe you're down working in Wainwright one day and you can go into our Cafe Inc. there um, and access some of the Gazelle resources. And this is an entrepreneurship strategy that is meant to be at your pace. Um, it's meant to provide you with services and enhance your skill set um, at no cost to you. Hi, I'm Sheila Viel. I am the uh, practitioner, uh, the owner of Potential Health and Homeopathic Care in Vermilion, Alberta. Here at my clinic, I offer homeopathic and naturopathic consultations for a variety of any um, area of, of uh, uh, symptoms or complaints that you're having that you'd like to inquire about. Um, I also provide biodynamic cranial psychotherapy. I do psychosomatic energetic testing as well, live blood analysis, dry layer. I also do uh, infrared sauna, foot detoxes. Um, I also do Mind Alive. I have the machine for Mind Alive as well. Um, I have a whole library of books that I have people come and just borrow and take out. Um, I also have a, a Dr. Ryan Stoiko that comes here three days a week and does chiropractor care. I also have Shiatsu therapy that comes. I have family constellation therapy that comes. Um, I also do iridology, uh, constitutional iridology as well, and color therapy. Some of the services. Uh, so basically, I do an in depth uh, consult when I see people. I have them fill out lengthy forms. They 
I spend at least an hour or two hours with my clients their first visit to really get to the reason for their disease. Uh, when we look at disease, disease actually means lack of ease. So we always want to go to that reason because we want to give what the body needs to heal because that's what naturopathic and homeopathic medicine is. We want to give the system what it needs to heal. We don't want to mask a symptom. So we really need to dig because everything is very multifactorial. Uh, the reason one person has, say, acne, there can be 10 other people with acne, but their reasons could be all different. So we really want to get to that reason because then we give what the body, what it needs to heal. Um, so as being an RN um, and working in that field, I understand how that system works. I understand all the medicines people are on. I understand when people get lab works and bring them to me, I'm able to interpret them uh, and we can talk about that and discuss them as well. So I have that background, but then in bioregulatory medicine, where I was trained, that was also a master's degree, it's on how and where the body is dysregulating. So we really then looked at the multifactorial uh, reasons people could have, and then the supplementation that is needed to give the body what it needs to heal, or we need to take away things. So whether we need to change diet, whether we need to detox a person, they maybe have heavy metals or formaldehyde or whatever it is we need to detox. So it's always either an excess or def you know, a deficiency as well. So we really look at that. So being trained in that RN and also then in that homeopathic, naturopathic um, way, I then have a more um, encompassing, a more, um, holistic way and looking at the whole from all angles. Uh, when people book an appointment with me, um, they're gonna fill out a lot of forms, many, many pages. It's gonna take them probably an hour um, because I ask many questions in many different ways because sometimes just by the way the question is asked, um, the, the answer could be different. And that's sort of like that investigative that I need to look at. Because when we look at health, health is not just physical, but it's mental, emotional, and, and spiritual. So in that questionnaire, we really look at what was your birth like? Was there any birth trauma? What events happened in all of your life? Accidents to trauma, what kind of family did you live in? We really look at what's called the adverse childhood experiences score. So sometimes I'll give that out as well because it, the research now proves the more trauma we've had as a child, later in life, it indicates the diseases we'll have. So a person with a score of four or more, research proves that they will have a 20% less, less life expectancy than a person with none. So we also look at, so I'm doing a lot of teaching on on how those events affect us physically because they actually cause constriction in the body. So if we look at the word disease, disease means lack of ease. So it's that constriction that's held in the body because it's not the event, it's the um, what it does to our system, which then later, as it continues to have that constriction for a long time, creates disease. So uh, the patient comes in, the, the, the so I do a lengthy, um, interview a consult the first um, time I see them and it's an hour or more uh, because I really need to go to that reason and we look at um, all of those factors plus also the psychosomatic part of it uh, delving into the the past because it's never about the present it's always about the past and then I'll do testing and I'll recommend I also like on my first consult to do the what's called a biodynamic cranial psychotherapy because that body work is really about um, the innate, the, everybody has innate capacity to heal. So with the touch of my hands, uh, I am able to see where they have that constriction from that. Um, from those events. Um, and through the touch of my hands, the system is able to release that constriction so we, we gain health. So whether we have no more pain or whether we have this more sense of well-being, but it allows me to also see where that constriction is and how um, the, the depth of it as well. Um, and the client then is able to also then see where they're actually being held as well because they can sense how the body is letting go as well.
So I do that as well. And then I do live blood analysis if I need to, psychosomatic testing um, as part of my testing and biological train testing. I had worked many years and it was either, um, I didn't, I didn't feel like I fit into that groove of Western medicine because I've always known uh, what supplements at an early age did for me. So I always knew what I was sort of lacking. And I always felt that Western medicine just sort of was a band-aid. You have a symptom, we give you a, a, a drug to stop the symptom. But the issue is still going on internally. So now we have in years more other um, issues that are developing. So I really wanted to go and help people to actually heal. So that's why I left Western Medicine and I went and did all my training um, to do what I'm able to do. Because I really had a sense of there was a better way. And I was either going to retire and uh, do nothing, but I really felt that I needed to, there was more I could offer the world. Uh, no, you don't. I just call a clinic and um, uh, my admin will talk to you at length of what it is you really want. Um, some people, you know, don't want to have an hour consult. They want something and really quick or, and we can do that. Or some people just come in and say, do you have whatever's on the shelf for say, um, for a cold or I want something, I want some probiotics. Well, uh, then she'll just direct them to what we have. But if somebody really wants to really have a knowledge and an understanding of what it is where they're dysregulating and what it is we need to do to heal. Uh, and if they want that consult, then we do that. And sometimes people come in and I'll just say, you know what, there's, there's so much going on. It would be really better if I did a consult to really get to the reason, you know. Um, some people don't realize, so we can sometimes encourage them to do that. But if they choose to just try something, that's, you know, we all have our, um, the way in which we want to heal and we just really honor that. And that's their journey and if that's what they want to do, we allow them to do that. Muse Inspired in Cold Lake is not your average clothing store. You'll discover unique brands like Sandwich, Pavillon, Camp, Dex, Spiritual Gangster, and more. Accessorize your outfit with shoes, bags, outerwear, and jewelry. Find one-of-a-kind gift ideas and don't miss out on their monthly sip and shop. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram to get inspired. Muse Inspired in Cold Lake and online museinspiredboutique.com. Hey, how's it going? It's Jenna on the Jenna Colburn Show, and I am down at Home Hardware where I'm going to show off some really cool stuff they have in their housewares. Now, it's spring. Lots of people are doing the spring cleaning. They're looking to brighten up their homes, brighten up their lives, and I think this houseware section has such great items. You're going to fall in love. So I wanted to give you like the grand tour, if you will. Walk around with me. I will be your personal shopper. I'll show you some cool items that you can find at Home Hardware Bonneville. Just pop on in real easy. By the way, Mother's Day is coming up in May, so you might wanna start thinking about what to get mom, and I have some great ideas. If my children are watching, or if husband Chad is watching, any number of these items are some of my favorites. So I'm gonna show you my favorites for spring in the houseware section of Home Hardware Bonneville. Let's get things started, okay? I'm gonna flip the camera around. All right, I gotta start off with yellow. I love yellow, and yellow is really big this year. This whole section, just loving the lemons, loving the plates, loving everything yellow, which actually gets me right into this. Hello, mellow, okay? We're yellow, we're mellow, we're hello. This is a fantastic loungewear. It is so soft. I can't even describe how soft this loungewear is, but loungewear is all the rage right now um, with the pandemic going on, not a lot of people being able to go out like they used to. Who has not worn lo loungewear to a Zoom meeting? I mean, it will change your life right here. This Hello Mellow line, absolutely fabulous. Any mom will be happy to get that for Mother's Day or for any other reason, okay? There's always fantastic finds at Home Hardware as well. Like these little guys right here. Look at that, silicone bottle cleaner. So if you're wondering on how to clean those glass uh, water bottles, how to get them nice scrubbed up clean, well, right there, you get one of these. Um, love it. Okay, 
Home Hardware, you may not know, has like a fabulous selection of clothing as well. And they're always bringing in new items. So um, you'll find something great. And they got just fabulous items that you wouldn't normally expect at Home Hardware here at Home Hardware Bonneville. And over here, just in time for Mother's Day, like I said, how cute are these? Oh my goodness, they're adorable. Okay. <laughs> um, like I said, great items. I could live at Home Hardware. That's how much I love this store for all of the fabulous things that they have. But it's spring and we're thinking like, hey, I want to change things up. I want to make things like bright and colorful, bring in a little floral, a little butterfly pattern, and you can come and change things up at really great prices here at Home Hardware Bonneville. Okay, who doesn't love a gnome? I know it was a big joke a long time ago, people who had gnomes in their yard, you know, it was kind of like the granny look, but now it's very chic, it's very fun, it's, uh, you know, it kind of shows that you have a fun little home happening. And I think the gnome is a classic for any yard. And yeah, get mom a gnome. Like I would love that gnome right there. I think he's so adorable. Actually, you know, this gnome right here is perfect for Caitlin. Okay, <laughs> she loves her cribbles. Um, that's fabulous. So I'm gonna whip things around to an area I didn't know Home Hardware had. So they have like um, oils, spreads, jams, body cream. Like anything you can really think of for yourself, for your home, for your mom, they have in their housewares items. And like I said, Mother's Day is coming up very soon. So you can really find like one of kind fun items that speak to your mother's personality as well. Um, silk pillowcases are all the rage because they do wonderful things for your hair. Okay, ladies, get a silk pillowcase. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Get mama a silk pillowcase and she'll thank you for years. Here's my favorite display right now. Like I said, I love yellow. So this one right here is a little honeybee display. Oh, I could go for any one of these things right here. So if you really want to make my Mother's Day special to my kids, um, anything here. And I know you might be thinking, hey, Mother's Day not for a little while, Jenna. Why are you getting so excited? It's because it sneaks up on you and husbands and children tend to forget about mom, not this year. These are some of my favorite items here at Home Hardware Bonneville. I'm so happy you were able to come for the tour with me and you're checking out the Jenna Colburn Show. Um, if you want to see, find any great items for your home, for your yard, for the garage, tools, home improvements, whatever it is, Home Hardware Bonneville is the stop you got to make here in town. I'm Jenna. Stick around on the Jenna Colburn Show. I'll be right back. Thank you so much for checking out the Jenna Colburn Show. So happy to have you today. Hit share. Let your friends know that we're live Wednesdays at 2 o'clock on Lakeline Connect. Huge thank you to Home Hardware Bonneville. I love stopping in at Home Hardware Bonneville, and I can honestly spend hours there. So, you know, they're one of my favorite hotspots. You'll see me there again, I'm sure. And I hope you took something away from those tips, tricks, and trends. Also, a huge thank you to Project Gazelle and Potential Health in Vermilion. What a great business. So happy to have highlighted them today on the Jenna Colburn Show. And my special guest, Elisa Brasso. Share this with your friends. Let us let them know you're live, we're live. And be sure to head on over to our Facebook group, The Jenna Colburn Show, where we have some post-show discussions. We always put up exclusive content. And it's just a lot of fun and a beautiful community. I hope you can join us there. Huge thank you to my producer, Chris LaPointe, for helping get me live and looking good every Wednesday at 2 o'clock on Lakeline Connect for the Jenna Colburn Show. Now you've been connected.